thank you, Dr. Patel, for your informative uh, <coughs> presentation. Now I would like to invite Dr. Mitty Chayal Kulkiri for the last presentation. And please, Dr. Mitty, to have your presentation. Thank you, Professor Lechno. So uh, now this is the last topic of the day, and uh, it's not many information about this, uh, the procalcitonin. So I would like to present the interpretation of procalcitonin in suspected fungal sepsis. Before I uh, further uh, present uh, the talk, I just would like, how are you, uh, can you test for procalcitonin in your hospital? Please raise your hand. <laughs> Oh, most, almost all of the people here can, of the hospital can uh, test for procalcitonin. It's different from the beta decocan, so I guess a beta decocan is not widely available. So, because procalcitonin is widely available, so can we use it to help us in diagnosis of fungal sepsis? So, uh, this is the list of the sepsis biomarkers, a lot of uh, biomarkers that can be used. Uh, in diagnosis of sepsis. Some of them are related to the inflammatory cascade and some of them related to coagulation uh, cascade or tissue damage and repair. And you can see the red color one it has been available in the commercial kit. We are very familiar with this one, the PCT or procalcitonin that has been used uh, very widely. So procalcitonin is a peptide precursor of calcitonin uh, comprise uh, 116 amino acids with a half-life of 25 to 30 hours. Uh, this molecule uh, can produce by mainly by the parafollicular cells or C cells of the thyroid, and this is, which is the neuroendocrine cells and also the neuroendocrine cell of the lung and intestine. The level in the healthy individuals is below limit of detection, so it's below 10 picograms per meal. However, in, uh, with a stimulation in, uh, for example, the bacterial toxin, uh, procalcitonin can be uh, rise uh, in the response to the pro-inflammatory stimulus. So this slide shows that there are two sources of the procalcitonin production. So the first one, and this we call the thyroid procalcitonin or thyroid uh, PCT, uh, it produced by the endocrine cell, and then they, uh, the procalcitonin will be cleaved into, sorry, will be cleaved to uh, calcitonin here before releasing into the blood circulation. So the stimulation of procalcitonin in production are listed here, uh, something like the gluco uh, glucagon and uh, the, uh, related to the endocrinology. And the other source of the procalcitonin, we call the inflammatory PCT, produced by the adipocyte. And it produced uh, to procalcitonin before releasing into the blood circulation. The uh, stimulus of this production is uh, are the lipopolysaccharide from the bacteria, inflammatory mediators like interleukin-6 or TNF-alpha. So that's why we can use the level of procalcitonin to help us. Uh, in uh, for diagnosis of sepsis, there are several studies. Uh, this is the uh, meta-analysis systematic review of the a lot of uh, study in the in procalcitonin in diagnosis of sepsis. Uh, this uh, meta-analysis show that it has the sensitivity of seventy-seven percent and specificity of seventy-nine percent. So PCT is helpful in diagnosis of sepsis, and however, it must be interpreted carefully in the, with the clinical context. So that's one is for bacteria. So can we use in fungal infection? Uh, this is a systematic review in eight studies uh, from the studies that uh, performed before 2013. And you can see here, the Procalcitonin uh, for diagnosis of invasive candidiasis, uh, it has a sensitivity of uh, 95% and specificity of 83%. When compared with bacterial infection, the procalcitonin can differentiate invasive fungal infection and bacterial infection with the sensitivity and specificity of about 80%. 
and uh, can differentiate invasive forms of infection and non-infection with the uh, sensitivity and specificity around 80%. However, all of this study is not a uh, well-designed study and have a very high heterogeneity. So it's not that uh, really good study. Uh, another study is the observation, observation, uh, observation of study in 20 patients, eight of which are hematologic malignancy. Aspergillosis, five patients, and candidium in three patients. And they found that the procalcitonin in these patients is really low, it's less than 0 0.5, but has a positive beta glucan and galactomannan, as you can see here. Similarly, with the neonatal ICU, who had uh, candidemia, and the level of the procalcitonin is really low, except one child that has a, as high as 17, and this child has a concomitant bacterial sepsis. In six uh, patients in the ICU with aspergillosis and candidemia, the level of procalcitonin is not really high, less than two, but they had positive beta glucan and uh, galactomannan. So it means that uh, procalcitonin calcitonin can use in diagnosis of fungal sepsis if the level of the calcitonin is, uh, is low. This is the list of the study of calcitonin in fungal infection uh, since two, uh, 2006, 10, and 14. Uh, this is a retrospective study in uh, 35 bacteremic patients and 15 candidemic patients in non-neutropenic patients. All of them uh, who, who, who had candidemia in 15 patients has a procalcitonin less than 5.5. So they proposed that if we use the procalcitonin uh, at 5.5, it's a level more than this, has a 100% negative predictive value of candidemia. This study is a prospective study in uh, candidemia, bacteremia, and mixed in surgical ICU patients with sepsis. Uh, the patient who had candidemia has a procalcitonin level is 0 0.71, whereas those who had bacteremia had a procalcitonin 12.9. So uh, from this study, they propose that the procalcitonin less than 2 nanograms per mil has a negative predictive value of 94% for bacteremia, but similar positive predictive value for candidemia. And this is a retrospective study in 260 patients in bacteremia, and uh, candidemia in sepsis, septic shock patient. And what they found was candidemia has a procalcitonin uh, 0.99. Bacteremia has a procalcitonin 16, that's really high. So if you use the cutoff point of less than six, for uh, the, this can be used for candidemia with a sensitivity of 86, specificity of 87%. Lately, uh, in 2020 and 15, a prospective study was performed in gram-negative uh, bloodstream infection as well as gram-positive and candidemia as well. And they found that the gram-negative bacteria has a very high procalcitonin at 13, whereas the candida albicans is low as low as 0.5. So procalcitonin might be able to use for distinguished bacterial uh, from candida infection, and can maybe even can uh, differentiate between gram negative and gram positive infection if, by according to the value here. These two studies were retrospective study. Uh, this one uh, includes that uh, bacteremic patient and candidemic patient, about 190 uh, patients who have septic shock and sepsis uh, with bloodstream infection. So. Similarly, you can see that procalcitonin is low in candidemia compared with bacteremia, and the cutoff of 2.5 can, uh, more than 2.5 may be able to rule out the candidemia. But if the level of procalcitonin less than 2.5, uh, can may, the patient might have the candidemia. Uh, this another study. A, a retrospective study in 166 patients in ICU patients with bloodstream infection. Uh, they used a combination of beta glucan and uh, uh, procalcitonin to predict the uh, candidemia from the, the bacteremia. 
uh, the cutoff is uh, 80 and 2. If the beta D group can more than 80 and PCT less than 2, the positive predictive value for candidemia was 96%. But in the opposite way, so the negative predictive value for candidemia would be 95%. So PCT can be used in combination with beta -diglucan. Uh This slide is from the, the, the latest study. You can see that bacteremic patients have a low beta diglucan and high uh, PCT. And candidemia uh, was in the opposite way. And this is the cutoff value they propose. However, uh, this year recently they have a meta-analysis from a 16 study included of uh, 45,000 patients with uh, 785 cases of candidemia. Most studies performed in the septic patient in the ICU. All except one were retrospective studies. Uh, most of the study has a lower PCT value in candidemic patients compared to bacteriemic patients. The, however, this study has a low quality and the difference seems to be insufficient uh, discriminative to guide the, uh, for therapeutic decision. So, in conclusion, procalcitonin may improve the diagnostic performance regarding the candidemia when combined with other fungal biomarkers like beta d glucan but we still need um, further study. So, in summary, uh, procalcitonin uh, may be used in diagnosis of candidemia and or differentiate bacteria to fungal sepsis. A low level of procalcitonin in septic non-neutropenic patients may be a clue for fungal etiology, especially when uh, we combine with the beta glucan and we see the high level of beta glucan. And most other studies were retrospective. Only one or two studies are uh, prospective and perform mainly in candidemia, not other form of invasive candidiasis. We need a large uh, prospective study uh, before post-calcitonin can be recommended to use for diagnosis of fungal sepsis. Thank you very much, that's all my talk. Thank you.